Welcome to the news on Zodiac with me, Joab Frank Chakaza. The headlines. Judge Kenyatta Nurenda nullifies appointment of some MEC commissioners by former President Peter Motarika. Parliamentary Committee on Natural Resources recommends suspension of government's power generation deal with Agreco. First ever privately owned banana tissue culture laboratory launched to improve banana production. And in sports, Ministry of Sports says it is committed to ensuring that the Flames play its home games in World Cup qualifiers slated for September this year. Now the news in detail. High Court Judge Nirenda has ruled that the Malawi Electoral Commission commissioners appointed by former President Peter Mutarika were not duly appointed. Judge Nirenda says the law compelled the president to appoint three commissioners each from MCP and Democratic Progressive Party, DPP, but he appointed four from DPP and two from MCP. Still with the court issues, the High Court in Blantyre has failed to continue with trial in the Thompson and Pinganjira judges' attempted bribery case after a defense witness did not show up to tender evidence. Mpinganjira's lead lawyer, Patrice Nkono, claims the witness did not show up on personal safety reasons. Their case has since been adjourned to Thursday afternoon when the defense is expected to parade another witness. Alex Banda with the details. A raiding of witnesses for Dr. Thompson in Pinganjira in the judge's bribery case was said to continue Wednesday morning, but the defense failed to do so. Lead defense lawyer Patrice Nkono said the witness had raised personal safety reasons, hence the decision to call him off. They had very good reasons, um, and the reasons have something to do with uh, the issues we brought to the judge yesterday. And um, so unfortunately, as I said yesterday, these are not uh, because these are these are issues about uh, personal safety and everything um, so you don't want to bring issues like that out in the public zodiac can tell that the witness who was said to testify is state house chief of staff priska Bodagaga, who was seen at the courthouse solicitor general reineg madema who is prosecuting the case on behalf of acb and the state said he could not object to their witness but is optimistic of their case we are satisfied with the reasons which they had um, um, explained to the court. Um, in any event, it was their witness. Uh, so as they said, uh, we don't have any problem with that. It's their witness, it is their case, because the case is at defense level. Meanwhile, the case has been adjourned to Thursday, 2 o'clock, when the defense is expected to parade a last witness, Ephraim Chivunde. But on Thursday morning, the case returns in the Supreme Court of Appeal, where a judgment on whether Judge Dorothy de Gabriel should recuse herself will be made. For Zodiac and Blanta, this is Alex Banda. Parliamentary Committee on Natural Resources has recommended that government should halt its diesel power generation of electricity deal with Agreco on grounds that it is ripping off Malawians. Committee Chairperson Wirani Chilenga says Agreco generates the most expensive power as ESCOM is supposed to pay the firm over 2 billion kwacha for fuel used to run the generators. Chilenga is suggesting that government should invest adequate resources in electricity generation Malawi Limited, Echenko, to, pro to procure its generators to lessen the double burden of fuel and power purchased from Agreco. Chimumabarata reports. Continued use of power generated from the generators, according to the committee, is not only ripping off ESCOM, but Malawians as well. Natural Resources and Climate Change Committee Chairperson Wirani Jirenga laments of a double burden as government is supposed to pay fuel costs for generators and buy power generated by the company. Chirenga says this cannot be condoned while recommending that government should scrap off the generator fuel deal with Agreco. Agreco generates the most expensive power. So as a country, I don't think we still need Agreco. Chief Executive Officer William Diabunya has since said Ejenko might need 30 million US dollars, which is equivalent to about 22 billion waja for the procurement of its generators to avoid facing the double burden. 
came in that we, for us to get these 70 um, megawatts that uh, Agreco is operating as of now, we need that amount of money that uh, we should get um, additional equipment. Over two billion waja is spent on the generators monthly, but it was initially estimated ESCOM will need 57 billion waja for the two-year contract when it was introduced in 2017, with an addition of 78 megawatts of electricity to the country's grid. For Zodiac, this is Chimwemwe Padanta. Earlier, electricity generation company of Malawi, Jenko Chief Executive Officer William Liabunya, told members of the Parliamentary Committee on Natural Resources that ESCOM's failure to pay its 52 billion kwacha debt is affecting operations. The cluster's chairperson, Werani Chirenga, said defaulting is scaring off other independent power producers in uh, trying to help the country deal with persistent electricity wars. We have this report by Chimwemwe Badata. Appearing before the Agriculture, Irrigation, Natural Resources and Climate Change Committee, Ejenko's chief executive officer complained delayed remittance of tariffs continues to affect the company's operations. As of last month, Riabunya said ESCOM owes Ejenko close to 52 billion waja in unpaid tariffs. Riabunya said Ejenko has meanwhile written Ministry of Energy over the same. Chairperson for the Parliamentary Committee on Natural Resources and Climate Change, Wiran Jirenga, said the tendency is scaling off other independent power producers. Once a Jenko has produced power, sell it to ESCOM, ESCOM does not pay back that money. And as of now, a Jenko has told us that ESCOM owes them 52 billion Malawi kwacha. Now, if this information is passed on to those who would want to be independent power producers in this country, they get scared that once they come into this country, start producing power, sell it to ESCOM as a single buyer, they will not be able to get back their money. Chirenga says the committee will bring together both ESCOM and Jenko to a round table discussion to look into the concerns. For Zodiac, this is Chimwemwe Padata. The first privately owned tissue culture laboratory for banana propagation has been launched in Lilongwe by Hotnet Foods Limited for multiplication of banana seed. Agriculture experts say it is a milestone in the banana industry which has been affected by banana banchi top disease. Speaking at the launch of the laboratory Wednesday, Agriculture Minister Lobin Lowe says this has come at a time when government is struggling to produce clean banana varieties to improve production. Hortnet Foods Limited chairperson Dr. Ebo Sefasi says the laboratory has a capacity of producing one million clean banana seedlings in a space of six months. Chris Condo details. Agriculture Ministry is currently promoting banana production with a quest to restore the industry which was collapsed due to banana bunch top disease. Among the interventions, the ministry is encouraging farmers to uproot all diseased plants and plant clean varieties. However, Agriculture Minister Lobin Lowe has admitted that they are facing numerous challenges in importing banana materials from France, India and South Africa for production of clean varieties as this demands a lot of forex, which is a drawback with the economic challenges. The minister says as a result, the country is importing at least 20,000 metric tons of banana fruits from Tanzania every year and he stressed the need for the country to come up with lasting solutions. We are trying to uh, multiply the suckers, but it takes a green planting material, a green plant rate to be sure that uh, the industry will really revamp. We have tried as a, as, a, as a government to make sure that we have big volumes of uh, planting material, but we lack ownership. So it's now high time we appreciate and promote private-owned uh, laboratories. And this one could be one of them. Honored Foods Limited Board Chair Dr. Abel Sefasi says the tissue culture laboratory has a capacity to produce up to one million green banana plants in a space of six months. The launch today of this lab at Hotnet Food Products means that Malawi can on its own working together as partners in private sector, government, uh, agrarian transformation, working together we can now produce clean plantlets.
disease-free plants that we supply to our own farmers at a very affordable price. The lab can produce one million plantlets within six months. The demand from the ministry is more than that, we know, but if we do that for five months, another five months, if we do that three times, we will definitely have contributed to the country's uh, development, the, the economy. Area, the agriculture minister toured a 20 hectare nature's gift banana plantation and its managing director, Guy Pickling, assured the minister that he will promote banana farming in the country to meet the demand. Records show that the country has lost over 80% of its banana plantation due to banana bunchtop disease. This is Grace Kombe for Zodiac. Now before we go for the break, back to our story about the High Court Judge Kenyatta Nyerenda ruling that the Malawi Electoral Commission commissioners appointed by former President Peter Mutarika were not duly appointed. We've got a report on that story. In 2019, former President Peter Mutarika appointed four names for May commissionership presented by the DPP and only two for the Malawi Congress Party. This prompted the MCP to seek court intervention, which Judge Kenyatta Nyirenda today Wednesday ruled that Mutarika erred in the appointments, adding that both the DPP and MCP should have presented three names each, hence the appointments were illegal. He has thus quashed the positions of the four Arthur Naturu, Steve Dua, Jean Matanga and Linda Kunje and ordered the DPP to present another set of three names if it so wishes as well as the MCP to present another name in seven days. MCP Secretary General Eisenhower Kaka said this vindicates the party and that it will abide by the ruling but was not clear whether the party may resubmit Richard Chapweteka's name. To say that I am overjoyed would be an understatement. I am extremely excited with the outcome. And uh, when I came to court on behalf of the party, one of the things I was mentioning was that uh, the law was not observed. One of the defense lawyers, Gabriel Chembezi, has welcomed the ruling, but that his clients know better on the way forward. DPP was supposed to nominate three, and MCP supposed to, was also supposed to nominate three. So the former president was wrong to appoint four for DPP and two for MCP. According to the court, the ruling will not affect the 2020 fresh presidential poll which they presided over. The development means that, meanwhile, the Malawi Electoral Commission has two commissioners, Anthony Mukumbwa and Olivia Liwewe, excluding the chairperson. Reporting for Zodiac, this is Western Guta. You're watching the news here on Zodiac. We'll be back after this. Maunity at TNM Quambida two hundred quacha, Cabana Posila Pamenepo, Mutal Kam, Moti, Mama Millionaire, Muti and M. Tikolore promotion. Kumamuka on Jesra, my units in the hundred quacha, Cabana Posilapo, Mutsandia, my bonus, or in Bidafoni, SMS, Cabana Data, Pompo Pompo. TNM always with you. Welcome back here. The top stories once again. Judge Kenyatta Nyurenda nullifies appointment of uh, some MEC commissioners by former President Peter Mutarika. Parliamentary Committee on Natural Resources recommends suspension of government's power generation deal with Agreco. First ever privately owned banana tissue culture laboratory launched to improve banana production. In sports, Ministry of Sports says it is committed to ensuring that the Flames play its home games in World Cup qualifiers slated for September this year. Now moving on, officials from the Cannabis Regulation Authority, CRA, were on Wednesday sent back from Parliament where they went to present a report to a joint parliamentary committee on agriculture, natural resources and climate change on performance of the board as it prepares to roll out cultivation of industrial hemp. CRA board chairperson Bonface Kazamina, together with his team, were sent back after they, failed, uh, after they failed to explain how they plan to use the 200 million kwacha 
that was allocated towards preparation of industrial hemp cultivation. Chairperson for the Committee on Agriculture, Samir Suleiman, cautions Malawi should tread carefully on the cultivation of the crop, fearing Malawians might not benefit. Shimo Webadata reports. Board Chairperson for Cannabis Regulation Authority, Bonfes Kazamira, told the Joint Parliamentary Committee groundworks are being initiated for the cultivation of industrial hemp. However, the board chairperson failed to explain how Cannabis Regulation Authority intends to use the 200 million guaja it was allocated when it appeared before the committee. But Kazamira maintains the 200 million guaja allocation is not enough. There are objective requirements that uh, the Act demands us to do uh, in order to, to manage the industry. It's, it's, it's quite involving. And that 200 million cannot even do anything. So this is the reason why uh, when they were presenting, they didn't want to look at the 200 million. They wanted to look at the whole spectrum, what we are supposed to do. Chairperson for the Committee on Agriculture, Samea Suleiman, is asking government to tread carefully on the cultivation of industrial hemp. Suleiman fears Malawians might not be and beneficiaries of industrial hemp cultivation. The whole th issue about cannabis, we need to go back to the drawing board. Mind you, the cannabis that we are growing is not our cannabis. It is as good as going to Canada and Canadians will give us seeds of Nkwani, go and plant this Nkwani for us. 31 licenses have so far been issued for the cultivation of industrial hemp. 16 of these were awarded to Malawians. For Zodiac, this is Chimwemwe Padata. Zodiac has established that Malawi has registered confirmed cases of the Indian COVID-19 variant. A top official from the Ministry of Health has tipped us that some of the COVID-19 samples that the country sent to South Africa to establish if the country has the new COVID-19 variant have turned positive. Meanwhile, Minister of Health Kumbize Gandodojibonda declined to immediately comment on the matter, saying the results have just arrived today, but the ministry will issue a statement. We have this report by Alinafe Mlamba. Our source, a top official from the Minister of Health, has confided in us that Malawi has received COVID-19 samples which it sent to South Africa to ascertain whether it has the Indian variant. The samples include those from some workers of Salima Sugar Company who returned from India. The source went further to inform us that some of the samples tested positive to the new variant. Minister of Health Kumbiza Kandodachiponda, when asked about this matter, said the results have just arrived in the country today and it will release the statement on this matter. It is just a matter of time before the minister officially confirms the variant. It is expected that the new COVID-19 guidelines may just be on the cards. Meanwhile, government has received another batch of COVID-19 preventive materials from the People's Republic of China. And according to the health minister, this will help in putting the pandemic at bay. We are very, very grateful for this uh, timely donation. You are aware that, you know, PPEs, because the, most of them, they're disposable. So you can never have enough. And uh, especially this time around, then as a country, uh, we have to be very vigilant, uh, considering that uh, the third wave has hit uh, most of our neighbors, uh, Zambia, South Africa. You know, the numbers, uh, they're tripling on uh, almost uh, on a, uh, uh, a weekly basis. So as a country, we need to be vigilant in order that we prepare ourselves. So that is why we are very, very grateful uh, for this donation from the People's Republic of China, which is going to assist us in this fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. The donation includes 50,000 medical protective face masks, 10,000 disposable coveralls, 10,000 pairs of medical cookers, and 300 sets of oxygen concentrators. The Blanta City Council says it has introduced the electronic issuance of business licenses in order to simplify the process of regulating businesses. The Council Director of Commerce and Industry, Dennis Chinseo, told journalists in Blanta on Wednesday morning that they expect to issue close to 7,500 licenses from July 1 this year. That will enable them to generate about 600 million kwacha. Economic commentator Bechani Cherenyu hopes the council will use the collected local revenue
to collect garbage in various parts of the city, construct toilets, and rehabilitate roads that are in a very bad condition. Christopher Sande has the details. Blanta City Council officials have told journalists that the electronic insurance of business licenses or easy challenges that some business owners were facing to renew their licenses. The council's director of commerce and industry, Dennis Chinseu, then asked the business operators to renew their licenses or else face closure by July 1 this year. He emphasized that this is the right time for the business operators to allow the council to inspect their business premises in order to improve health and safety standards. Uh, we need to understand that uh, whenever we issue the license, the business operators are very much aware of when the business license is supposed to expire. So what we are simply trying to do is to remind them to say, can you come forward and make sure that you have your business license renewed. Uh, so all I'm saying is, uh, let them come forward. If they have challenges, we are going to discuss and possibly come up with a solution in terms of a payment plan that is going to allow them to uh, pay for their licenses within the time that they feel they'll be comfortable to do that. Chinsew added that they hope to issue licenses to 7,500 business operators, which will roughly assist the council to generate 600 million kwacha. Economic analyst Bechan Chereni hopes the council will use the collected local revenue to collect garbage in various parts of the city, construct toilets, and rehabilitate roads in the city. Reporting for Zodiac from Plantaya, this is Christopher Sande. And now we turn to sports. The Ministry of Sports says it is committed to ensuring that Malawi national team, the Flames, play host to its home games in World Cup qualifiers slated for September this year by renovating the Bingu National Stadium. Minister responsible William Sungama has told us that they have since engaged a local landscaping company which will work on the playing fields starting next week. Recently, the Confederation of African Football, CAF, told the country's football governing body, FAM, that games involving flames will not be staged in the country due to the poor state of Kamuzu Stadium. Brad Kanyama has filed a report. Speaking to Zodiac today Wednesday, Minister of Sports Ule Musungama said government is working tirelessly to ensure that the Flames host their home games in the country, with priority being renovating Bingu National Stadium in Lilongwe. Confederation of African Football told the country's football governing board, the Football Association of Malawi Farm, that the country will not be able to host games organized by CAF as it has no facility for that course. Farm submitted Kamuzu Stadium as the main hosting venue, but was dismissed as it failed to meet minimum requirements. Sungama, however, said they have engaged a local landscaping company, which will be unveiled soon to start working on the playing field at the Bingu National Stadium. We have engaged uh, a contractor, a company that is uh, into landscaping, that will help us into bring back the status of the stadium. I can assure Malawians friends who play at the Bingo Stadium come the World Cup qualifier. That will do, and uh, without fail, because there are just quite a few issues that we need to look into, which we are capable of uh, doing. Africa World Cup qualifiers were postponed from June to September, a development which was described by many, including the Football Association and sports analysts, as a blessing in disguise as it gives authorities to work on the sport facilities for the games to be hosted in the country. Flames will start away to Cameroon before playing host to Mozambique in September 2021 in the World Cup qualifiers. For Zodiac, this is Bright Kanyama. And that's it for now. Let's take another look at the headlines before we leave. Judge Kenyatta Nyurenda nullifies appointment of some MEC commissioners by former President Peter Mutarika. Parliamentary Committee on Natural Resources recommends suspension of government's power generation deal with Agreco. First ever privately owned banana tissue culture laboratory launched to improve banana production. In sports, Ministry of Sports says it is committed to ensuring that the Flames play its home games in World Cup qualifiers slated for September this year. 
visit our website zodekmalayo.com for more news. My name is Job Frank Chakaza. Thanks for watching.